So in 2015, I started feeling extreme pain. It would just, actually it came first in the middle of the night and I just didn't understand what it was. And I went and got um, my sinuses looked at and they were like, you're clear. And he was, it was actually the um, ENT that was like, you, you have trigeminal neuralgia. And I was confused on what that was. So I started doing research and had to go see a neurologist and it was definitely diagnosed as that right away. I couldn't go out. It was with me. It was light. It was wind. It was um, touching. It was chewing. It was so many things that impacted it for it to throw it into the pain. So I live in Hawaii, and so I love to be outside. And uh, my family lived in darkness. I had constant um, the blinds closed. I had the curtains closed. She came into my clinic um, because uh, basically she was having just an absolutely uh, life altering and, and debilitating pain uh, in her face. It was actually on both sides of her face uh, and it was from uh, prior procedures that she had had for trying to actually treat facial pain. Um, but what can happen in those situations is that you can end up with changes to the actual nerve um, in, uh, inside the brain itself and uh, if you get these changes to to that nerve, you can end up with a with a with a different and a totally new and an even more severe type of pain. Uh, and it's something called anesthesia dolorosa. We went to our innovative care committee and said, you know, we know we can do this safely. We've been doing it for a long time now in epilepsy, but there are different conditions that we think could actually benefit from this approach. Uh, what we were able to do was to bring her into this context of the human neural circuitry program and find the exact spots deep in her brain where stimulation uh, would alleviate her suffering. We have in this room, we designed and built a network that spans the whole campus and lets us send a signal to servers across campus and back in less than half a millisecond. That lets us have extremely fast uh, communication, closed loop assessment of what's going on with all these electrodes that are deep in the brain, listening in on what's going on uh, as the patient experiences subjective feelings. And this lets us see exactly what signals matter and exactly where it might be most useful to, to intervene. My, my, my own particular role was I was very much involved in target selection and planning of the operation uh, and in, uh, assessing her clinically during the period of, of stimulation and testing and week. Uh, week following implantation, and then finally uh, in, in targets, in selecting deep brain stimulation targets that we eventually went on to in planning and carrying out that operation with Dr. Butcher Smith. So it was into, yeah, the minute they turned it on, it works. It makes me feel like I laid in bed after a long day and I'm putting my, like, I'm laying in bed. That huge of just. Stanford is a world class institution that has the best in all of these domains. Um, and so we were fortunate because we were able to, to really create a, uh, a therapeutic approach here that combines clinical care, passion, and science to really uh, you know, develop an innovative therapy. I feel like what Dr. Butch and Dr. Mago did, that is the wave of the future. Like this is it, like this is what people need at this moment.